everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to construct a 3D room on Element 3D as well as how to add the lighting and the camera movement to it. If you're not already familiar with the Element 3D plugin, then I recommend you to watch my video on the basics to Element 3D. I will link it in the description. So let's start with opening up Element 3D. So I'm just going to make a solid layer and just apply the element effect. Now let's go to scene setup. So first we want to create the walls of our room. So just press create and then click on this box model. So here where it says size XYZ, I'm just gonna turn down this middle value. So it's more like the thickness of a floor. And I'm just going to increase the size to maybe like 500. If you want to have more of a rectangular room, then you can just go back here and increase this first value. Now what I'm going to do is press Command D, I believe it's Control D for Windows users, to duplicate the box model and then just drag it up so we can see it. Now I'm going to go to this middle value and make it 1 again. This time I'm going to change this third value and make this one thinner. And then just drag it to this side of the wall and drag it up just like that. If you want, you can also make the wall shorter. Now just press Command Z again to duplicate it, and this time we're going to drag the Z to move it on the opposite side. Now to make these left and right walls, I'm just going to duplicate this wall again and drag it to the middle here. Go over here and change this middle orientation to 90. Now just drag it to the side here. Then I'm just going to increase the Z value again just to make sure that the edges like they really meet like that and now I'm gonna duplicate this and drag the X so that it moves to the opposite side now to create the ceiling I'm just going to duplicate the floor but let's say you have a bunch of objects down here and you don't want to figure out which one is the floor then just tilt it so you can see where the floor is click this little pointer and select it and it'll automatically select the model for you just make sure to click back to the camera and now we can press command D again and just drag it up so now we have the floor ceiling and all of the walls so i'm just going to click ok to save this so there's two websites where you can download 3d models cg trader and turbo squid i will link both of them in the description i personally use cg trader but i imagine that turbo squid like the interface is going to be similar to this so i'll just be showing how to download from cg trader so i'm just going to search up like whatever model i want so for example just bed of course, you want to click off the free box, and where it says formats, you want to filter it so that it's only OBJ, because that is the file that is compatible with Element 3D. Now you can just select any one of these beds that you want to use for your edit. So I want to use this bed for it, so I'm just going to click on that and then click free download, and just make sure to download the file that ends with OBJ. Now go back to Element 3D, and you want to make sure that you click on group folder, then press import and locate the file that you just downloaded make sure it's the one that ends with obj and just double click that and press ok really quick i'm just going to disable the wall so we can see it sometimes when you import 3d models for some reason it comes out like really 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 small so if you don't see it try increasing the scale and it's probably you're gonna see it starts coming up so click normalize size and there now it should all be there so now that you have your 3D model on Element 3D, you want to change the appearance. So click on this little arrow, and if you click on one of these, and let's say just make it red or something, you'll see that it changes multiple things at once, and that's kind of the downside of like downloading models, but when you download your models, it's not fully customizable. So now you just want to go through this list and change the appearance of everything, and how I usually figure out like which material changes what i just changed the diffuse color to red and see okay well it affected those and i think i want to make those like brown or something so i'll do that and then going to the next one let's see which one this changes so it changes the um the mattress here so i'm just gonna make that more of a i don't know a gray i guess and then just go through the list figure out like how you want to change the colors So now that I've changed the appearance of my bed, I'm just going to enable the room again. And obviously we want to see inside of our room, so I'm just going to extend this again. And I'm just going to disable the ceiling, 
as well as the front wall here so that just so we can see inside our room now i'm just going back to the bed model i'm just going to decrease the size move it up you know just move it around the room So we're actually going to go back a little because I forgot to change the appearance of the walls. So to change the appearance of the floor and the wall and everything, just click this little arrow and then here. You'll notice that when you change this, it'll change everything else because they are all duplicates of each other. So what I'm going to do is for each one of these, for every one of these except for the first one, I'm going to right click on this and click duplicate and replace and do that for every single one. That way, when you change, let's say, the color of the floor, it's only going to affect the floor, not anything else. As for how you want the floor and the walls to look, that is up to you. You could just have a plain color, or you could go to Google and search, like, you know, white floor, wooden floor, um, or maybe you want to use, like, a wallpaper or something like that. It's all up to you. For the walls, we obviously want them to be the same color, background, whatever. So this is the material that I used for this wall. So I'm just going to drag that to the rest of the walls and you'll see that it'll change all of them. So now that we have the bed set and we have the wall set, you just want to go back to CG Trader or Turbo Squid, find some more 3D models to add to your room and just repeat the process of, you know, placing it in your room and changing the appearance of them. So once you've created your room, just make sure to enable the ceiling and the wall again and then press OK. Now we're going to be adding the camera movement and the lighting. So first let's add a camera. So just click here and add a camera layer. Now the only thing that you'll need to worry about with the camera settings is the millimeters. So the larger the millimeter amount, the closer it will be to like whatever it is you're viewing so for example if i have a 15 millimeter one you can see it like zoomed out of it versus if i change this to a let's say 35 millimeter you can see it zoomed into it so i usually like to use 28 35 is good too but i usually use 28. it's easier to move the camera and stuff with a null layer so i'm just going to create that and link my camera to the null and make sure to click the 3D here. Now, what I like to do to make things easier for me is first I click P for position and just right click, separate dimensions, and then just hit the stopwatch for all of these. Now I press R for rotate and hit the stopwatch for these and also the scale. Now, if you press U, all of the values that you'll need to change for this camera movement is all laid out in front of you. And you don't have to keep going back and forth between like, P and R or whatever, you know, you can just see all of the values that you need to change right here. You also want to highlight all of these and make sure that they are easy eased. And now we're going to position our camera at the starting point. So obviously you can see that my camera is kind of below my room, so I'm just going to drag up the Y position. Now you want to think about how you want to move your camera and how you want it to start. So I'm going to move it to this right side over here and I want it to kind of be close to the TV first. So I'm going to increase the Z position. That's going to bring me closer to the TV here and raise up the Y position as well. You can also play around with the rotation value. So X rotation, it'll rotate it like this and Y rotation will rotate it like this and then Z rotation is just like that. Now you just want to keyframe your camera movement and you just have to be patient with this because you have to figure out okay like how slow do I want it to go, how fast do I want it to go, where exactly do I want it to move and you'll also have to be patient for all the rendering so yeah just, just be patient. <laughs> Thank you. 
So once you're pretty happy with how it looks, you want to figure out whether or not you want to add graphs to your movement. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really just depends on how you want your camera movement to look. So I recommend just trying out different graphs, trying it out like without a graph. So once you're all done with the camera movement, you want to add a light layer. So just going back to layer and create a light layer. And there's four types of lights, parallel, spot, point, and ambient. I honestly don't know how to explain any of these. I usually use a spotlight and you can see how this looks. Obviously, it's, it's just a spotlight, you know, it's only pointing to one area. Or I'll use a parallel light and honestly, I don't know how to explain either of these and really how all of the light settings work. So I'm just going to change this back to a spotlight and I'm going to keyframe it the same way that I keyframed the camera with a null layer and make sure to link it and make sure it's 3D and I'm just going to do the same thing that I did earlier and now you kind of just want to play around with these values and change up the position of the light. You want to make sure that you move the light the same time that you move your camera. So since I have keyframes here, I'm going to make my keyframes here. And you also want to try to have the same graphs for your lights as you did with your camera. So since I'm using a spotlight, to make the spotlight look a little more realistic, I'm going to make the room darker. So just going back to my Element 3D setup and click Environment and I'm just going to turn down the brightness of this. And you can see it made the whole room darker and now the light looks a lot more realistic. And once you're happy with how everything looks, you are actually done creating your 3D room. If you want, you can pre-compose all of these clips. Just make sure that you have all of the layers within the pre-composition. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow my Instagram at Virgo Yoon's link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.